As I've told you before, it's been very rough owning retail-oriented real estate investment trusts of late. The combination of store closures and rising interest rates, which offset their high yields, has made these stocks downright toxic to your portfolio. Hey, but you know what? I could be wrong. Maybe the worries are real overblown. We always want to hear the other side of the story, which is why I'm so glad to have Pennsylvania Real Estate Investment Trust, symbol PEI, here with us tonight. This is a company that owns 29 retail properties, mostly shopping malls across the middle Atlantic, especially Pennsylvania, uh, Philly, Washington, D.C. But in addition to its mall exposure, Pennsylvania Real Estate also has a gargantuan 8.5% yield at these levels, which is sometimes not a great sign because when a yield gets that high, it indicates that there's a lack of confidence from the market. So let's dig deeper with Joseph Cardino. He's the chairman and CEO of Pennsylvania Real Estate Investment Trust. Get a better sense of where his company's going and where his industry is headed. Mr. Cardino, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Good to see see you. Thank you. All right, so Joe, obviously the industry's taking it on the chin. Uh, J.P. Morgan with a piece saying uh, your uh, funds from operations guide well below the street. Uh, when you recently reported, your stock is almost at its 52-week low. It's got an 8% yield. And yet every move that I've seen you make, whether it be changing some of these weak anchors to this fashion district project, they've all been good. So can you explain to me the disconnect between what you're doing and how people are viewing it? Well, You know, it all goes back to Jason Kelsey's line when the Eagles won the Super Bowl, which is hungry dogs run faster. Um, We've run faster. We've been out in front of the problems. We've we've sold off 40 percent of our of our portfolio. And a lot of those have done quite poorly. You sold the bad stuff. You didn't sell the good stuff to fund the bad. 17 malls, 25 anchors have closed in those those 17 malls we sold. Right. And, and the result has been that in the assets we kept, we reinvested. We took, we took back 12 anchors. Ten of them are leased. Two are about to be leased. Um, and so we're, we're well ahead of the curve as it relates to the problems, the headwinds that we see in the, in the retail space. But, you know, you did say in your first quarter that the bankruptcies, there would be more bankruptcies, but it mm-hmm. seemed like that, that would be the low quarter. Well, exactly. I mean, we... Look, bankruptcies are never a good thing, right. but we've turned them into a tailwind, okay. right? Of the of the 12 department stores that we either took back or got back, we've increased the rent by an eight multiple, right? Getting getting returns in the high single digits and replacing them with tenants like Burlington and TJX and Dave and Buster's all tenants that are going to drive more traffic and drive more sales to our properties. It's important for people to note that Sears has gone from 27 to 8, J.C. Penney 31 to 16, Macy's 25 to 14, and I presume the remainders are good, like whatever's left of Macy's I know is doing well. Look, we've got, we've got strong anchors remaining. Right. I mean, the rationalization that's occurred in the department store space has been a good thing. Yes. Right. We, we didn't need that many Macy's or that many Sears or that many JCPenney. The result is you replace them if you've got strong assets right. with better tenants. You drive more traffic and more sales. You know, one of the things that we've seen, we've been talking about, is there is a renaissance of the remaining retailers. They're almost all beating their numbers. Plus, the apparel companies are killing it. That's apparel that is often sold in a mall. So what I'm wondering is, that has the perception, of which I've been part of, uh, overshadowed uh, a reality of stronger companies coming in? And here I'm thinking about the fashion district in Philadelphia. Under retail, you make that point right at the top saying Kansas City has more high-end retailers than Philadelphia. Under retail downtown, and the companies that you're bringing in are not your traditional apparel companies. No, I mean, we're down to around 40% of our of our malls are apparel. You know, we've differentiated to dining, entertainment, uh, health and beauty, fitness, on and on and on. I mean, the, the very different curation of, of, of tenants that, we, that we've done in our properties. And we'll do a similar right. thing at the, at the uh, fashion district where we'll bring in, you know, entertainment, I mean, live entertainment right. venues and all, all kinds of uses that are, you know, it's not your grandmother's mall anymore. No, look, I was there when the, uh, the, gallery, when the gallery opened right? downtown. And it was all those traditional department stores. And my mom worked at, at, at Litz. My dad worked at Gimbel. So I was like, wow, it was a renaissance. Of what, but actually, that's not the way 
way the millennials shop anymore, right? No, that don't. is my generation, but the millennials want experiences, and you're giving them those. Yeah, who would have ever thought virtual reality in a mall? Right. That's, that's real today. But, you know, look, the, the best test for us is, one, occupancy is headed up. Two, our sales year-to-date are up 8.2%. 8.2% year to date. And, and our renewal spreads are trending, are trending positive. So all of the metrics that one looks at to, to say, how are they doing, are positive. Right, now, and 95.9% Occupancy. Right, that's correct. I think that what we had, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's just not a lot of people who follow you. It's not big, but at the same time, I know you from when I was growing up as one of the most conservative operators. Somehow people feel that you've taken on more risk. You've taken on dramatically less risk. Well, we've we've been very careful in our capital allocation. Right. We've sold assets off and used that capital to strengthen our balance sheet and invest in quality assets. Right. The result of which is this is the time to buy PEI, right? We're tremendously undervalued. Our dividend is safe. Right. Our dividend is safe. In fact, we've got $14 million in, in pent-up revenue that we think over time we're going to be able to increase the dividend. Well, it's funny. There's a guy I know who wrote an article on the web who was just saying, hey, listen, uh, if you don't get the stock, if you don't buy the stock, it's going to get taken over by someone. And I read it. I said, you know what? That's, that's actually a possibility if you, it, it, because you've got great properties and it's worth more than selling for. Exactly. Look, my job is to drive shareholder value. Right. If to do that, you know, we, we need to think strategically. We're open to that. There you yeah. go. Well, you just heard everything, and that's exactly how I feel about it. Joseph Cordino, Pennsylvania Real Estate Investment Trust, PEI, Chairman and CEO, a radically reformed REIT that's not getting the credit for it. Stick with Kramer. Thanks, Jim. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.